Us human beings, we're always looking for shortcuts. And one of our favorites, to judge people based on their appearance. Now, here's the thing about success. Here's the thing about professionalism. People have an idea of what that looks like. That vision of a successful man in their mind is a well-dressed man. So, use that to your advantage. In today's video, gents, I'm going to lay out how to build a 15-piece professional wardrobe, how much money to spend on each item and why. So, let's talk about the three different budgets we're going to be working with on this video. First up, coming in at under $750, we've got the starter budget. First up, we've got one suit for $150, taking up 20.13% of our budget. We've also got one sport jacket and odd trouser combination, again, $150, taking up 20.13% of our budget. Next up, we've got dress shoes and a belt, costing $100, taking up 13.42% of our budget. We then have five dress shirts at $25, costing us $125 and taking up 16.78% of our budget. We then have three casual shirts, costing $15 each, for a total of $45 and 6.04% of our budget. Next up, we've got casual shoes and a belt, costing $75 and taking up 10.07% of our budget. Next up, we've got two pairs of casual trousers costing $25 each for a $50 total that takes up 6.71% of our budget. And finally, we've got a set of accessories. This could be ties, watches, sunglasses, pocket squares for a total cost of $50, taking up 6.71% of our budget. Next up, let's look at the mid-range 15-piece professional wardrobe, this one coming in at just over $2,600. In this range, we see one suit costing $500, taking up 19.05% of our budget. After that, we've got one sport jacket and an odd trouser combination, again costing $500, taking up 19.05% of our budget. We've got a pair of dress shoes and a belt, costing $300, taking up 11.43% of our budget. And then five dress shirts, costing on average $75 each for a total of $375, taking up 14.29% of our budget. We then have three casual shirts, costing on average $50 each for a total of $150, taking up 5.71% of our budget. Next up, we've got casual shoes and a belt, costing $150, taking up 5.71% of our budget. And then we've got two pairs of casual trousers, costing on average $75 each for $150 total, consisting of 5.71% of our budget. And rounding things off, we've got our accessories, ties, watches, sunglasses, pocket squares, watches really being the majority of this cost, costing $500 and coming in at 19.05% of our budget. And now let's talk about the luxury budget. This one's coming in at just over $11,000. Let me show you the breakout. So, in the luxury budget, the suit is going to come in at $1,500 and be 13.57% of the budget. Next up, a sports jacket and odd trouser coming in at $1,500, taking up 13.57% of the budget. Next up, you've got the dress shoes and belt coming in at $800, taking up 7.24% of the budget. Next up, we've got five dress shirts, on average $200 each. So, $1,000 on dress shirts, taking up 9.05% of the budget. We've also got three casual shirts, on average $150 each for a $450 total, coming in at 4.07% of the budget. Casual shoes and a belt coming in at $500 and taking up 4.52% of the budget. We've got two pairs of casual trousers, on average $150 each, taking up 2.71% of the budget. And rounding it off, we've got our accessories, tie watches, sunglasses, pocket squares, watch taking up the majority of this, $5,000 and that's 45.25% of the budget. Now, obviously, quite a disparity in price. I'll explain why throughout the video, so pay attention, take notes, a lot of info in today's video. Now, guys, before we go into the details of building your wardrobe, let's talk about the details of saving money as you're building your wardrobe. You need to be using ShopTagger. They're the sponsor of today's video and I've talked about these guys before because I love what they're doing. They allow you to shop online easier by putting together these wish lists. Basically, you're able to go into any store, over 5,000 stores and grab the items you want. If they don't have it in stock, they don't have it in size, they don't have it the color you want, it's not on sale and you want it to be on sale, guess what? You could indicate this in the wish list and whenever it's back in stock, whenever it is on sale, whenever it's in the color you want, you'll be able to get that exact jacket, those shoes. And the best part is whenever you're going to check out, ShopTagger is going to go across the web. They're going to make sure that you always get the best discount code out there on the web. So, guys, you don't have to go hunting for codes. They're going to make sure it is right there and you are always going to save money. So, you can download it on any device. What I love is they synchronize with each other. It is incredibly easy to use. Nordstrom, Amazon, eBay, Adidas, 
Thursday Boots. Guys, your favorite brands you can save when you're using ShopTagger. And gents, ShopTagger just added the cash back feature. So if you don't have the latest version of the app, you want to use that link down in the description to go grab it. This one is a no-brainer, an amazing sponsor, proud to have them. So let's start things off by talking about the suit and the sports jacket with odd trouser. I'm going to throw these together because when we're talking about this price, $150, $500, $1,500 for the three different ranges, that's a pretty wide range. And you're wondering, okay, am, am I getting a 10 times better suit at 1500 bucks? What do I expect to compromise on? What should I be looking for? That's what we're going to be talking about here. So starting off at the $150 range, what you can expect to compromise on here is fabric. 100% wool is what you want to go for. But at the $150 range, you're going to see a lot of synthetics. You're going to see a lot of 50-50 blends. However, you can get a good fit. How do you do this? You want to take, even if it's a $125 suit, you want to take this to a tailor to get it adjusted. Now, at this price range, you can't expect a company to actually provide tons of service. So, you're going to have to pay extra for the fit. And you want to make sure when you try that suit on, it fits you as close to perfect as possible. You can get some adjustments made, but understand that if it is too far away in the fit department, that the tailor can only do so much. You want to look for the best material you can find. Occasionally, you'll find a 50-50 blend, something 50% wool and 50%, let's say, polyester. That would be okay. You're going to probably be buying this at a box store. You're going to be buying it online. You're going to be buying it at a place where someone isn't going to give you much advice. So, there's also a lot of room in this area to fail. And then let's step up to the $500 range. And for the record, I think $500 is a sweet spot, a value spot for suits. If you know what you're looking for, you get that fabric, maybe you get an $800 suit that's on sale, you get it adjusted to fit your body, you look at all the different style features so it's functionally, it's going to be classic and it's never going to go out of style. This is a suit that can serve you well for decades. And now let's talk about the high-end luxury suits, $1,500 plus, and believe me, they can get a lot more expensive. But these suits in particular, what are you paying for? You're paying for oftentimes a name. So, if it's a designer house, you should be getting better fabric. You definitely should be getting better service. So, this is going to be something that all the tailoring, all of the adjustments should be done in-house. It should be something when I talked about the fabric that you're getting a luxury wool, 100% wool for sure. But Or maybe they're going to bring in something different than wool. They're going to bring a little bit of cashmere. They're going to bring in something that has a little bit of silk interwoven with wool. You're going to see unique colors, unique patterns. You're also going to see styles. You're going to basically the men that are working with you or women, they're going to help you design out the suit and they should know what they're talking about. But at that really high-end price point, you're going to be going for those luxury materials, that luxury service and sometimes styles that you really can't find anywhere else. Now, let's talk dress shoes, casual shoes and belts. And I'm putting these together because whenever I buy shoes, I like to buy the belt in combination. But we're talking about 25% of your wardrobe budget. In my opinion, if you are going to spend more on any of the items I'm talking about, I would go up and spend a little bit more on your shoes to be able to get quality. At the $100 price point, I would be very careful when you're spending less than $100 on a pair of dress shoes, less than $75 on a pair of casual shoes. Why? Because those are oftentimes going to be constructed by being glued together. What you're giving up at the low price point is construction. Over time, these are going to look worse versus a well-made pair of shoes are going to get better with time. These shoes right here are using a Blake stitch. And a Blake stitch is where they have a machine go in on the inside and it stitches the upper down to the sole. What I like about this, it's a very elegant look and it's just a more timeless design. A few hundred dollars for the shoe, yes, it's expensive, but this is going to be something that's going to last you 15, 20 years. When it comes to luxury shoes, you know, it's around $800. Should you spend $800 on shoes? Not necessarily. I mean, I've got some Gucci's and they're really beautiful, amazing shoes, incredibly comfortable, but were they worth, you know, $600 for a pair of loafers that I could get a very well constructed pair for maybe two to $300? I don't really think so. But I know some people are going to disagree. They love particular brands, particular styles. They swear by them. So that's where people are spending a lot more money. Now, when it comes to casual shoes, in general, the price is going to be below dress shoes, but there are going to be exceptions. I still think, though, that you should spend a little bit more. Go for the mid range, about $100, $150. And the reason being is you want to go for better upper construction. So that's where they're going to be spending the money and really you want to look at the build quality. Most shoes like sneakers, they are going to use a cement construction, basically the glue and that's perfectly fine because you don't need to have these stitched together. But it is going to be something I would pay attention to the upper, to the laces, all the material that are used here. You don't want anything falling apart. You want to look at the stitching, make sure that they actually did a really tight stitch here. And let's not forget about boots. I'm going to throw these in with the casual shoes. So when you see boots,
boots out there for 75 bucks, 85 bucks, $50. Understand that the construction, the material is probably going to be very cheap. I do think if you spend a bit more, you have a lot more options, $150, $200. Really, you can look around, you can find some great boots on sale, or you can find some brands that sell directly to the consumer. Once you go higher than that, we're all of a sudden talking $300, $400 for a pair of boots. What you're looking at is a much better construction between the upper and the sole uh, so that they're going to be stitched together. So then you're looking for a good year welt. You also want to be looking at the detail. Like right here, we've got this beautiful broguing. We've got the construction. So dress boots and other boots of this type are going to start costing that price point and I think are well worth it, especially if you get years and years of wear. All right, Jen, so now let's talk about shirts. We're talking about dress shirts, casual shirts, and what are you paying for at each of the categories? Because with dress shirts, 25 bucks, $75, $200. That's a pretty big price range. Casual shirts, $15, $50. $150 for a casual shirt. Plus, what in the world are you getting? Why is there a 10 times difference? So, when we go down and we look at the lower quality entry level price point shirts, we see a lot of times 100% cotton. We also see polyesters. We see blends. But when we are looking at cottons, we see sometimes a recycled cotton. And basically, this is a cotton that's been used many times. So, in general, the fabric of the shirts at this price range is not as good. That being said, you can get some good deals because if you know where to look, you find something that fits your torso, fits your body well, you can get adjusted in the sleeves, maybe make a few minor adjustments here or there. You can get some amazing deals for dress shirts, I think at the $25 range. And same thing with casual shirts. You find t-shirts that actually are well made because as you step up, with those casual shirts and you start going from the $15 to $50. On the dress shirts, you go from $25 to $75. That's when you go into some more specialty fits. That's when definitely you should be looking at better quality cottons. So, they're going to use longer strand cottons. We're talking Egyptian cotton. And so, we're going to see better quality t-shirts, better quality Henleys, better quality button downs. And once you wash them a few times, they're not going to fade as much. So, that's why I really like that mid-range, especially if you find a brand that works for your build and looks really good on you. Then once we go up on shirts, we start going to the 200, yes, $200 dress shirts and they go well beyond that as well. $150, you know, designer casual shirts and that's really what you start paying at this price point. You are either getting something custom made for you, you're oftentimes going with very high end cotton materials. Fabrics that just are a little bit harder to find, that are going to have a very tight weave, have a unique weave. And yes, there are t-shirts that cost $75, $85, $150. What are you paying for? Well, you better be paying for a great fit. You better be paying for great material. And what you want to get at this price point is the best. And let's not forget your casual trousers. We're talking about chinos, khakis, jeans, even shorts we can put in here, gray flannels, anything that you would wear with those casual shirts and you could even possibly pull off with a dress shirt. But let's look at those price points, $25, $75 and $150 plus. I'm not going to recommend that you spend a whole lot here. I do think if you look around, you can find some amazing deals, especially if you're big into jeans, you like shorts, guys, easily 25 bucks. 30, 40 bucks. Now, at the $75 range, you definitely should be able to get 100% cotton. Uh, you can even find some designer options at this price point. Once you get up to $150, you definitely want to be getting what you're looking for. In fact, thinking about it, the only guys I think that need to spend a bit more money here are the hard to fit guys. You know what I'm talking about. You spend a lot of time in that weight room. You got those big super thighs. This type of guy, he may actually have to go for a designer brand or a specific brand that's a more of a niche brand that works for his particular build. Now, if you paid attention to the chart, you may have noticed that the percentage of your accessories went up a lot as you started spending more money on your wardrobe. $50, $500, $5,000. What is up with this 100 times increase? Are you getting a 100 times better accessory? No. What I'm talking about with accessories is this is a place as you have more disposable income and you start to spend more money on your wardrobe that you may want to make an investment piece or you may want to upgrade pieces that you use again and again. A good example, sunglasses. So, when you first start off, you got a cheap pair of $10 shades, $5 shades. But as you start to build up your wardrobe, you want to maybe opt for a 
$400 pair of shades. Yes, sounds really expensive to a lot of people, but maybe to a pilot or to someone that spends a lot of time driving and wants to have very clear vision, they understand it's important to have the right tools. Or let's talk about watches. So, at the entry level price point, there are a ton of options out there. And yes, you can find watches, I think, for 25 bucks that are actually cool. Or you can go with Timex, you can go with uh, Casio. Both of these are classic brands at the entry level price point. Now, once you go up to $500, and I'm not saying you got to spend all that, but you start finding brands like, you know, Orient or maybe Seiko. And again, a good Orient, a few hundred dollars. A Seiko, you can find them for a hundred dollars or maybe a few hundred dollars. Point being is these are quality watches that could last you the rest of your life and you don't even have to upgrade here. But if you want to, you want to start spending, you know, a few thousand dollars on a watch, then maybe you want to look at a Tudor. Maybe you want to go for a tag or maybe it's going to be something that you want to bring in a Rolex. Again, a little bit more than 5,000 on this one, but I will say that an investment in an accessory is something that you're probably going to have and you'll be able to pass on. This could be, you know, an heirloom piece that you pick up. So, what video to watch next? How about 13 fashion hacks that will transform your life? Okay, they may not transform your life, but they will make you a better dressed man. Check them out, guys, by clicking right here.